Hello. This is meant to be a tutorial series of three videos that are meant to teach about rotational math and different coordinate spaces so that way you can understand how to do this stuff on your own and it's all in blueprint because it's just doing math. Um, as a showcase of this I've made an example where I have this chair and this cone as you can tell in the hierarchy, they're not attached, you know, they're not parented to each other, but I can move the cone around with the chair and rotate the chair and it will rotate with it. If it stutters or something like that, that's mainly because my computer is being a little weird when running this with OBS. Um, I also turned off snapping because it kind of starts fighting with like some other stuff uh, because of the way the engine handles the snapping and everything. And um, at the same time, I can also just rotate the cone. Whoops, I can rotate the cone and even move them around, you know. Whoops. And then I can grab the chair and it'll it'll keep that rotation, that orientation and everything. So. And I can even turn on simulating physics and it will do that. I just turned off uh, the the ground is just invisible, so it still has collision. So. As you can tell, stays attached <laughs> uh, at runtime, which is good. Uh, if you hear my cat meowing, she's desperate for attention right now because stuff is happening. So you might hear her making noises and everything. Um, as a general heads up, I'm just going to show you what the finished version looks like. So that way, if you want to just quickly throw it together on your own, you can. Um, I will be going step by step in explaining each step of the process so that way you understand it. I did try to comment the code as best I can, but um, yeah, this is just going to be me doing a quick walkthrough of the blueprint. And then from there, we're going to actually build it out ourselves. Uh, we're going to go step by step. The first one's going to, the this first video is pretty much just explaining um, that we're using quaternions and it and how that kind of general math works and more of a this is more of a concept video rather than like implementation video but you do get the implementation details initially just to save you time um, so i'm going to start on that and as a heads up the second video is just going to be us doing the attachment um, point so that way it sticks with it and then we're going to do the offset so that way it's like we can move it around and everything so anyway and just to let you know, I've already made a empty actor. It just has two functions in here that's already set up. I've already named them appropriately, but that's about it. And it has the uh, arrow components that are rotated and they're visible for us to test. So anyway, here's our parent version. Uh, I have two functions here. The delta times optional. I just added in just because I could. Uh, I'm not even really using it. So, you know, do with that what you will. <laughs> uh, anyway. I also have these two functions here for get actor quat and get actor quat local, mainly as time savers because I don't have the ability to get actor quat uh, in Blueprint uh, natively. So, like, I just had to make those functions. So, I'll just quickly show those to you. Here's all my variables that are for this actor, this class. And I made some conversion functions that are these four and we'll go into those in a moment so yeah so here's what i do to convert it to local i get i use pretty much the rotator and just convert it to a quaternion uh, you can do this doing two quat not even finishing the full two quat statement it does two quaternion and then i just inverse it and for the world i don't even need to inverse it so and as a heads up uh let me do this quat equals quaternion. I just don't like typing out quaternion all the time, so I use quat. Um, it's a common thing. It's just shorthand, save time, that kind of thing. So that's that. Uh, let's go into store transforms. Um, we'll get our child actor if it's valid, get its actor location. We'll store it uh, as a variable in here for the actor to reuse later. And then, oh, let me, actually, yeah, this is right, because uh, we're getting it from the child actor, not ourself. And we're getting, oh, hello, Gatika. She brought me a toy, one second. 
Well, she completely missed me throwing the toys, so she's going to go hunt for it. Uh, but I have the child actor, actor rotation, and basically convert it to world, and then I save it. Uh, that is right here. And then I call these two functions to convert it to local space and save them right here for the actor. So we're going to go into each uh, function now. So I input in the world location I just stored. Go to world location, convert to local. Um, sorry, those are my diagrams for later. <laughs> Sneak preview. Preview. Anyway, uh, location to convert is this one. Get the difference from our current location. And then I rotate it using the local space quaternion. Okay. And then I go back here, get, sorry, cat. Uh, and then world quaternion to local. Uh, it's pretty much an easier to see version where it's just using quaternion to convert. Uh, the order matters here. So if you have these flipped, it will not work the same. Uh, it even says that when you highlight the node, uh, the result of multiplying two quaternions and the order does matter. As it says, order matters when composing. I don't like using words like composing and logically first and subsequent transformation because that's two that's those two two dollar words that i just don't have the time and effort to even think about so i like using simple words to understand things and pictures so that's how you're going to learn it with me uh anyway so get actor quat in local space which as you remember it's those two functions i made as shorthand um you might hear my cat meowing in the background so anyway, so that's store transforms. And then we're going to go into tick transforms, which is a bit more complicated. Yep. Uh, so let's zoom in. So first we have child actor, get our current world location, and we save it out as a temporary variable, which is this guy, and our local variable. And same thing we did before where we get the actors, the child actors rotation, convert it to a quaternion in world space, and then save it as a local variable. I use temp as a prefix just by standard kind of thing. And then I set its location and then I store the transforms again so that way next frame it's using the correct information. So let's go back over here. So for the location let's first start off with uh, here. So that initial location at begin play uh, it's in local space so we're going to convert it into the world and then before we do anything with it, we're then going to calculate our current offset in world space. So we're using world initial attach location, and we're using the current world location, which is this one, and we're getting the, you know, the difference, uh, the offset really. And then we're adding that to our converted local location. So append the offset to the into the let me rewrite that to the converted the converted world location. And then we find the difference from that new offsetted location from our current location. And then we add that offset to our current world location. So we apply that, and that's how we keep it attached, moving around, and we can move it with as well. So then let's do the rotation stuff. Rotation stuff's a little bit simpler, but Still, uh, basically, we will first do the conversion from local to world from our initial attach quaternion rotation. And then we will get our current. Let me redo this again. So this guy is this guy here. So we're converting it into world space. And then we're grabbing our world location or rotation that we saved earlier and we're inversing it so now this will convert it into local space and then we're converting this guy that we just put it into world space back into local space but it now it's relative to our current frames local space because it could have changed between the time of you know when this was set and when this is kind of thing like maybe two or three frames happened and maybe now we're calling uh now we're calling this func this whole function again, so now like the world's rotation is different significantly from this guy sort of thing. So that's why we do that. And then what we do is we convert it back out into our 
world initial quaternion as an offset. Because really what this is doing is we're converting it out into world, then converting it back in to get our difference, and then we're converting it back into the world to get uh, to apply an offset essentially to our current our cached um, quaternion rotation. Not right now, cat. Not right now. And then we just apply the, those set, those values, and then we store them again. Which, if you remember, it's this part. So, seems simple, but like the math behind it, you know, it always seems complicated, but then when we break it down into pieces, then it starts making more sense. So, now we're going to go into here, and we're going to delete this actor, and we're going to use our YouTube tutorial guy, and throw this guy here. And before we do anything, I just want to let you know there's nothing in tick transforms. Um, and this, these are updating on tick at the moment, just because of how this is set up. Uh, since this is a general concept video, I'm going to go over the X, Y, and Z, and W parts of a quaternion. So quat, a quat, quat. Uh, you might have also noticed when I clicked on the quats, I didn't have a W value. Uh, I, I don't know why Epic did that. I really don't know. So what we're going to do is going to do make vector four. Wrong one. Yeah. Um, actually, let's do break vector four. I'm going to plug these guys into this one. And we're going to promote this into a variable. And we're going to do um, test what? Yeah. So compile, expose that, save, and then we're going to set actor rotation. This is in world space that we're setting the actor's rotation, by the way. And we're going to set it to our quaternion. Luckily, there's already some nodes that handle the, qu the conversion for us. So. so anyway, we go into the world, and you don't have to worry about the cone. We'll be dealing with the cone later on. So right now, we just need this information. We're just focusing on this guy. So I'm going to open the test quad back up. And we're going to go over each component. So each component of X, Y, and Z, and W is meant to really signal a corner of rotation for the actor. So, and the W is meant to be kind of like a interpolation between those different corners, if that makes sense. Um, personally, I never really use it. I never really mess with the W. Uh, Obviously, if you have a better understanding of quaternions, you're welcome to comment and let me know I'm wrong or whatever. Just please, you know, be respectful and be eloquent in your speech if you're going to explain it. Um, but W pretty much is kind of like you. It's it's like a interpolation between those four corners. So we're going to go into here. We're going to hit play, and so I'm going to hit G so you we can see its current rotation. I'm going to slowly just increase the X and keep an eye on it. And then, as you saw, it rotated. Uh, I'm going to flip back. So it's really just flipping it. You know, I'm just moving back and forth, by the way, on the X. So it's flipping the rotation. And I want you to keep also an eye when I when you see it flip, uh, keep an eye on the X roll. So you're going to notice it does a 180, 180, 180. So it's like... It literally is a flip. It's the inverse. So when you have zero, it's, you know, zero. But when you do like plus do one, then it's now the flipped inverse of X. So now that's 180. You know, it's been flipped. I'm going to do that. And then the Y is the same way. So if I do one on the Y, now it's flipped in the other direction. I'm just going to drag them back and forth so you can see the difference for a minute. <laughs> and really like when we're combining these like it you start understanding how these rotations kind of work where it's like okay, we're really just combining x and y and we don't need to worry about if it's like, you know, 0 0.2 or 3.5 or whatever. It's like we just understand that we need the axes, you know. So, now same goes with z, so I'm going to move it up. If I do negative, 
same thing. So an important part about quaternions that you should know is that they're always they're always intended to be normalized. Okay. Right now we're kind of breaking that rule <laughs> just for this purpose. But uh, all right. So, but they're they're pretty much supposed to be normalized all the time. So I'm gonna increase w to one. Okay. And we're gonna pretty much just mess with the z-axis for now. So keep an eye on it as I drag this. Suddenly it's not snapping and it's like slurping over. So I've set it to one, but as you can tell, it's not flipped. So I'm gonna drag W now back to zero slowly, and you can see I'm oh I went to past negative, but now that's at zero, you can see it's flipped. If I drag this back up. And I keep going, and I keep going, and I keep going, and I keep going. Yeah. So you kind of get the idea that like W affects them in a way of their interpolations between each other. So if I was to do one and then one here, now we've got a different rotation entirely, you know? So they're really meant to be like the corners of it, and then the W is kind of interpolating between all of them, if that makes sense. So it avoids gimbal lock is really the important part, which is fantastic. <laughs> That's why we have that extra component W is for the, the gimbal lock account, accounting. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, I would suggest kind of like looking up more tutorials on just kind of how those components kind of work if you're interested in that. But we, we're not going to be digging into that. As you saw, we were literally just doing multiplicate we were using multiplication calls and we weren't doing anything like specific in like a specific component or direction. We were just like inverse, multiply, inverse, multiply, subtract, add, that kind of stuff. It's like there was no real specific magic numbers being used, if that makes sense. Which, you know, that was the that was that was the whole point of this, is meant to be easy to understand. So in the next video, we're gonna go over just getting the location and rotation of this cone and when we move this guy it holds that rotation and location relative to the chair but it uh it's not it we're not going to be moving the actor yet because if we try to move the actor then you know offsets need to also be accounted for and stuff so uh to the next video hopefully this one was helpful let me know if it was um and i hope you have a great day